so the final, well, next to final story, uh, I just wanted to do a quick update. This is the Dream Chaser. It was uh, a, uh, what was intended to be uh, one of the commercial crew vehicles carrying or taxiing astronauts to and from the International Space Station. Uh, it's built by Sierra Nevada Corporation, which actually um, has a facility up in Louisville, um, about a mile from where I live, and um, they did a drop test where they actually flew this thing and it landed successfully. Did not have any people on board, but it wasn't chosen as one of the, uh, the commercial crew vehicles. And so Sierra Nevada has reworked the idea of this into a, an uncrewed cargo vehicle, and they do have a contract from NASA now to start carrying cargo to and from the space station. And so what this is what the cargo version would look like. Um, it's solar powered, it's got a, a docking port back here. All of the cargo would be inside the uh, the pressurized volume of the, of the spacecraft. And uh, what's important about this sort of design is it actually allows them both to carry upwards of 10,000 pounds to the space station, but it can also bring an equivalent amount of stuff back from the space station. Most of the cargo vehicles, with the exception of the Dragon, built by SpaceX, uh, they destroy themselves when they re-enter. So they're, they're trash cans. Uh, they bring all sorts of garbage off the station, but they can't actually bring experiments back. And so what happened uh, last week was the structure of the very first Dream Chaser, that'll be their test vehicle, um, that was delivered. It's been built by Lockheed Martin in California, and it was delivered to the Sierra Nevada facility up in, uh, in Louisville. And so this is what it looks like. And so over the next year plus, um, they will finish the construction of this. And th right now the schedule is in late 2021, they'll have their first test launch to the International Space Station. And uh, this, if you think this looks a little like the space shuttle, you're right. It's about one quarter the size of the shuttle orbiter, but it will behave very similarly. It uh, enters the atmosphere sort of belly first, and then it sort of does these sweeping turns to bleed off energy, and it lands on a runway. Um, so that gives them the capability, for example, if they land at Kennedy Space Center, um, within half an hour of landing, you'd have access to the material that's been brought back from the space station, as opposed to uh, something like the Dragon capsule, which parachutes into the ocean, and it takes a couple days to actually bring it back and, uh, and get the experiments uh, out, of the, out of the capsule. So that's exciting, and I'm... Uh, sort of hoping at some point in the, in the next year we'll have someone from Sierra Nevada come down and give us a, a presentation on how this is, uh, is proceeding. So we'll have more updates on that. <laughs>